Now let's use async await to do the same thing. First, let's make a function called get user info to hold our code. To make our function asynchronous, we add the async keyword. Now, let's get a user from an API, for example, the JSON placeholder API. We'll use the fetch function to grab data from JSON placeholder users route. And let's store the data we get in a constant called response. We mentioned earlier that async await is a modern and simple way to manage tasks that take time to finish. For example, here we can see that the fetch function needs time to get the data from the API, right? So we'll use the await keyword. This tells JavaScript, wait for this to finish before moving on. But wait, fetch just gives us a response object, not the actual data yet. To get the user info, we need to turn it into JSON using the JSON function from JavaScript. That takes time too, so we use await again and store it in a constant called user. Now that we have the user data, let's print their name. The API gives us a name field, so we can use user.name. But what if something goes wrong, like the internet is down? We don't want our code to crash. To solve this, we use the try catch block statement. For example, here we use a try block to run the code that might raise an error, such as fetching data from the API or processing it. If we do find an error, let's use the catch block to, aka catch the error, and log it to the console, printing a friendly message along with the error details so we know exactly what happened. When you run this, it'll fetch the user and print something like, user's name is Leanne Graham. If there's a problem, it'll say oops instead. This is async await in action, waiting for data, but only where you tell it to wait. Keeping things simple and clean without dot then promises. If you enjoy our videos, grab our free async await playbook by joining our Kofi community. Links in the comment.